Welcome to your podcast. This is episode 93 of the podcast. Find a podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube with the video anchor.fm. You're here podcast. Uh, we can add a free M. My name is Dave Dan Mike's here and oh shit. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> My name is All right, Mike's here. I want to be real. This is take two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I messed up. I'm it's sorry. Okay. My language, I'm sorry. We're kid friendly now. It's We're trying okay. to get more views. Um I want to introduce a very amazing special guest. <laughs> Second time for two. for the eleventh time now <laughs> since the last one was the tenth that I fucked Damn, up. Man. Um, I mean I messed up, messed up, effed up, or fricked up. Sorry, fricked up. Um, Dave, any input on Adam? I have one question for Adam. <laughs> we can't do that again. Did you or did you not see me dunk at Manu's place? Uh, yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I, th- I thought we lost it there for a second. That's a, that's all. That's all. Well, Adam's Adam's a good guy. Adam's my 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 close friend, my close my brother. Um. Adam is a, a teacher now. You can yes. find him on Skillshare.com. Adam has a class. Adam Lauder. Search Adam Lauder's uh, uh, um, "Living Truthfully Under Imaginary Circumstances" acting class. Yes, and you will find Adam Christian Lauder. I'm taking the class. Mikey's taking the class. I'm really learning a lot from it. I'm writing with my buddy again. Well, actually, mm. not again. This is the first time we're writing, but it's a. F- I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it what it is because i don't know what it is yet because we're, we're 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 just starting the thing but it's really exciting um and he's back on the show for his fifth appearance fifth or sixth i think it's i think it's fifth i want to say yeah it's, it's just i wanted to go in on like you guys writing together because it's crazy how because you can we get so- effects though can we say adam christian louder and then can you put effects right now yeah three two one adam, adam christian, christian louder and then the explosion Woo! I'm going to put you on like an audience. You're going to put yeah. you on like a body walking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want the Tom Cruise. I'll do I it. want the, the lethal uh, Mission Impossible thing. Dun, 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 I'll put it in it. Oh, you're going to make me. Ed- I'm going to edit like all yeah, that. Yeah, now. yeah. Adam. Adam, how you feel? Adam. Welcome back. You are here. I feel good. I feel, I feel good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the shortest episode ever in podcast history. Um, no, I'm just um, I feel good. I mean, I'm having crazy deja vu, which is weird. I don't know why. That's we weird. Just <laughs> I kind of feel that way too. Did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Things. Are, how things how's are the good. how's the Skillshare thing going? It's going pretty good. Um, I was telling Dave, it's kind of one of the most gratifying things I've ever done. Um, wow. You know, I care a lot about acting. I feel like I've learned a lot. And I felt like I had a way, especially during this pandemic, where a lot of people are are more at home than they have been in the past, uh, a way to communicate um, some tools, some doable things that can get you better at acting, maybe, or things you can try that, that really have worked for me. Mm. And uh, having a platform to share that on has been incredibly gratifying. Yeah. Even though it's just a few people, you know, I've got like... 40 something students hey bro at the moment hey, put 40 a, people in a room that's a, that's a lot that's of people. a classroom that's a lot of people yeah 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 it's it's cool i mean it's only a, like a 45 minute class so you know you had to squeeze a lot of stuff in but mm. i tried to squeeze the essentials in and just kind of start a conversation too i'm super available um if anyone ever wanted to reach out and kind of ask more questions or do some more deep dives i'm all about it i love it so it was a blast. It was a blast. I got to go back to my old high school and film in an auditorium that I'd never seen because everything's brand new. Oh, wow. And um, my my buddy who I've known 20 plus years, he helped me shoot it. And Kirk, uh, Katie was Kirk there helping with me. The, just the three of us. Kirk, Kirk. Shout out. Shout out. Kirk, Curtis Christian. Kirk. Kirk. Uh, he's ha- <laughs> Dave has a rivalry with Kurt, by the way. Oh, and really? It's hilarious. Every, anytime Dave calls and Kurt's there, he in, instantly is, is like upset. Is that, oh, is it Kurt? And then Kurt, his, his new best Kurt, buddy. Well, like his new best plan, buddy. New, uh, yeah, I've known him for like twenty three years. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh, nah. It's about quality, not quantity. Into it. Hey, it's quality, like, not quantity. Moved. You know what I mean? It's quality, not quantity. <laughs> what <did> you? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so good. <laughs> he doesn't throw a football as well as you. There's I no, sh- there's no mm. shot. If we're gonna be we honest, we played football the other day. <laughs> 
Oh like, my god! Yeah, not, not bad, but uh, Com- he played center in in middle school. That was when he played. So listen, you know you like, know why he played center? <laughs> why? Do I have to answer this? Or? Yeah, the least athletic position on the field. Oh, <laughs> yo, he's he's an interesting dude. He he did not make the basketball team in seventh grade, and then teams. he ended up being on. JV faster than anyone. No, no, that's not true. But he like he was the most improved player every right, year. He, right, like, right. And he, JV. And I respect him a lot for that. But he like, I'm only playing. Kurt's Kurt. funny, man. I'm just he he, uh, he teaches his photography at our at our high school. His dad was a long time oh, wow. calculus teacher, so he was Mr. Christian, and now his son is Mr. Christian, and it's weird. <laughs> um, but he loves it. I mean, things have been pretty tough with uh, with the you know COVID and everything. Yeah, it's been yeah, hard yeah. on teachers, but. But uh, he's a good guy. He's he's expecting a kid in February. God really. bless you, man. So, exciting. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, he's great. He's funny though. He when Dave's on the phone, he's like, he knows. He now knows when Dave calls because of my like the way I talk. He's like, I oh, was that Dave. He kind of gets jealous too. <laughs> see, see? And then he's like, he was like, tell Dave uh, I'm the reason Adam moved back to Texas. Oh, oh man, wow. see, don't say, don't say that. If you if you were to get if you were to renew your vows. We know who's standing closer. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. You know? That's hilarious. And I rest my case. I want a measurement. I, I want to bring the measuring tape. Bring the yardstick out. <laughs> Listen. That's amazing. So, I want to throw in for the the, the class. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. The class. Um, I'm taking it too, and Dave as well. And Dave's an actor, and I'm whatever I am. I don't know what I am anymore. You're an artiste. I don't know what I am anymore. You know, I feel lost, but I think this class has been helping me gain a new definition of what I want to make. Mm. I just wanted to put that out there. So I think it's good for anyone that's a filmmaker, actor, anyone that wants to create stories. I feel like it's a good thing to, uh, a good tool to use so you could learn, you know, the mind of an actor. And I think that that works for, you know, that in any position of filmmaking, you have to kind of know. Mm. That's my that's my piece. Thanks, that's what I, man. I appreciate it. Now I remember I so called I remember you, I called you a teacher, oh. and is that why you started the class? Oh, Mike wants to know oh, because he called you a teacher. Is that why you did he have everything to do with you starting the school? Mm. It is because of Mikey that I have a skill share. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to know. So I'm just trying to figure out first, for for the future. The first educational in the wiki production, actually, officially, <laughs> Skillshare paid us like three mil. Um, you know what's been cool, dude? Uh, what? Let me get in what? real quick. What, what we've been talking about, don't say what like that. What we've been talking about, first of all, don't do that. What we've been talking about. What? <laughs> listen, <laughs> don't, 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 don't put an emphasis on the T. What we've been talking about on our, on our calls about like the business side of things has been really cool. Now I know you've been you've been reading a lot. You got your book right there, I think. Down and Dirty Pictures. You got me onto that book. Um like what what is it about like w- you were so invested when 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 you lived here in the city. Like we would we would always be rehearsing, we would always be looking to like work and just constantly creative like thoughts were coming through and just positive energy and just a ton of energy. And it was always like on the artistic side of things. And then there, there seems to have been like a shift where you've started to pick up and like attack more and, and have be, be more of like a sponge for, for the business side because it's a two-sided thing. It's not just an artistic venture. It is also, if you want it as a career, it's a business. You're, you are essentially a business um, and you have to be business-minded and at least understand how the business works, I think, to... Uh, to lay out a career for yourself uh, long term. So like what was it like what shifted for you? Like on that flight home did you have you know like I'm just going to fucking I am going to become the best business minded actor there ever was or like what was it? Um well I was just driving along in Texas and I kept I just kept getting this Odd, and it did not feel from me because, as you said, I was not a business-minded person. Even, even now, I'm like, I'm 
cursed when it comes to money, business, commerce, anything. I'm allergic to money. And that's why I know Katie loves me. Um, <laughs> because they ain't never going to handle money. No, but uh, I, I kept getting this thought, which was start a business, start a business, start a business, start a business, start a business. And I was like, all right, I don't know what this is. This is annoying. Katie, stop saying that. And she was like, I'm not talking. <laughs> I was like, well, I, this is weird because this is coming from something. So then I was like praying about it. God, do you want me to start a business? Well, I don't know if this is Satan or if this is you or if this is just some weird thought I'm because I'm ADHD. Like, what is this? And it just kept coming back and it felt very, um, it felt very right. So I, I pursued it. Um, and so I've just been, I've just, like you said, I've just been trying to be a sponge, trying to learn distribution, trying to learn the point of business. Yeah. And I think I just keep coming back to this analogy that just kind of works for me in my lane. You know, if you're sitting on, if you're the best actor in the world and you have the best material Thank you. ever Thank you. written. Thank you. And uh, of course I'm talking about myself. <laughs> yeah, then... <laughs> No, no. But as a, as an example, if you were uh -huh. and you had the greatest preparation and you worked so hard and you rehearsed and you had the greatest material and you performed it in your bathroom, it wouldn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What are you doing? What, what is the point of you acting so well and communicating this story to yourself in a mirror or to no one? Um, and I thought, oh, that's, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, every good piece of art needs a really strong vehicle to reach human beings. And that's important. And I've totally neglected that because I felt like my premise was always, if I am the greatest that I can be, that will sell itself. Like someone mm. will attach themselves to me. They'll want to partner up because I have great value. And that is already something that, uh, should just be happening but that's just not the way things go no one's going to do anything for you of course you do have to have value um and i do feel like i do have value but there has to be a lane uh it, you know it just a formula one car sitting in a garage isn't that great mm -hmm. i mean it's supposed to be out on the track and it's supposed to be it's the race and it's supposed to compete um so i've just been trying to learn that and and humbly and openly honestly admit that I don't know anything and uh, try to soak it up. So a little bit of a, I feel like it was a divine uh, thought. And I think there's something at the end of that uh, thought. If I meet it with action, something will come, but it takes courage and it takes faith to even believe that. So yeah. it's a challenge every day that there's times when I think like, what am I doing? You know, I'm an actor. I should just act. I don't know why I even care about the business thing. Like, you know, leave that up to the agents and the financiers and the commercial, you know, I don't care, but I do, I do. I'm starting to care a lot more. And I'm starting to see that it's just as much of a service as uh, performing in a really good scene and doing a good job as an actor. Yeah. Mm. It's, it goes, I, it, I keep thinking about Mikey said it last week in, in your Skillshare, you asked the quite the main question first, which is like, why do you want to act? You have to answer that first for yourself. And I remember I, I answered it for uh, on the pod. And it was like a refresher of why I wanted to do it. And that connected to like for years, it was all artistic, artistic, because I'm going to be, I'm going to be as good as I can be so that I can work to share my personal experience, something I'm going through in the attempt to inspire hope in other people. So if I do that, that's what I want to do. That's why I want to act. Um, mm. But there's no way, again, that'd be me in my bathroom. I can't do that from my bathroom. So you need to know the business side of things in order to get in front of a place where it can be projected, that image, to other people in some capacity. Your work needs to be seen. Mm -hmm. And as much as you like, I don't know, as much as you, you I think you need to harness the, I think it's a, a good thing to do is to do it the way we did it. I know, because we, we, we would get frustrated, like if we're keeping it real. We get super frustrated when we're like, I know we can do this. I know we can fucking do this. We're capable of doing this on a, on a grand scale. Um, it just the bigger opportunities seem to have eluded us up until this this day. Um, I'm still grateful for everything we've gotten so far, but like it is a frustrating way of going about it, as opposed to like Adam was this fire child actor who just you know was super silly on 
da da da. And now and now he's, you know, he's working on some indie thing. And then the next thing he'll do, you could pick up your craft as you go that way too. We just didn't have it that way. We had it kind of on a mm-hmm. and, on a reverse kind of way. Um, mm-hmm. So it comes with the zone set of frustrations, but also a lot of real world experience. And um, yeah, I don't know which way is better, but yeah, it, it just it just made me think like I'm really excited to be learning about the business side of things with you. Like you've always kind of kind of led since I've known you, like led the direction. I I just seem to. I heard a McConaughey quote on my Green Books Audible. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it to you. Prescribe. So this is that's what he would call something. It'd be like a prescribe. He'd say, the greatest followers don't always lead, or the greatest leaders aren't always in front. They know when to get behind, or something like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh man, wait a second. Okay, and it made me think. And I was like, oh, okay. So so. To be a leader, yeah, the, the 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 most like influential people that I've gravitated towards are, are, are people that I think like have their head on you know the right direction. Are uh, they're not like this, these like strong headed like loud fucking people. I don't I don't get that sense of like Whoa, uh, let me let me see where this person's going. You know, I'm I'm in I'm in. Hmm. Um, it's always someone who seems to have like a, a great understanding of a thing and like also like the ability to explore uh, a passion for something, but not like a push it in your face kind of thing. And I think that's where you're like a very, you've led me in a lot of ways so far in like what I've done since I've been your friend. And yeah, like this is one of those things. Like it's opened me up to this idea of business being an essential thing I need to learn and learning it with you has been really cool. As long as like, as, as well as the writing, like, but the, this this thing has been really like exciting to learn about. It's and I, I used to think it was like watching paint dry, but uh, straight up, I, I enjoy it now. Like the idea of like, how did a movie make money? How was a movie made from its inception? Oh, I, I, I'm all over it now. Yeah, right it's now. exciting to go back uh, and to see those it's things. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and just like you know, being glorified on stage uh, through acclaim and praise and respect from your peers and everyone wanting to be you know, uh, you know, whatever, all that. It's just as seductive to want to just make a ton of money doing it. (laughs) I have to, I have to be free from that. That only happens when I have like a really good spiritual practice, right? Because the only thing that fulfills and sustains me is God. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I go, Oh, 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 because I'm crazy obsessive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just get tunnel vision, and yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this. Yeah, I'm gonna kill. Yeah. They, they thought they knew. Oh, oh. And I get really cocky. I can see myself being one of those, just like crunching the numbers and like it's got to be more and more and more. We gotta and losing myself uh-huh. somewhere along the way. But the the like really pure thing there is is a uh, I, I heard someone say at some point, you know. In a perfect world, which doesn't exist, if every actor, every artist of destiny, they would have a commune with their audience. That's the thing that every artist is looking for. Find their audience. And that manifests itself in many, many different ways over the course of a career. Mm-hmm. Um for me, that's all the business thing is. It's just connecting the art to the artist, the artist to the art, and vice versa. You know, it's it's just finding a vehicle. It's just getting a screen. It's it's helping someone see it. It's putting on someone's glasses. It's leading them down the aisle and putting them. Are you okay? Do you have popcorn? Are you are you happy? You're satisfied? You need to go to the bathroom. We won't play the movie until you're ready. I really want you to take this in. Yeah. I really want you to take this in. Yeah, yeah. This is for you, made for you. Mm. Individually, every person in the audience, whether that's at home watching Netflix or in a theater someday or here at the podcast at home on a, on a computer or through your headphones listening to a podcast, whatever it is, that should be made to serve that person. Yeah, whatever yeah. that whatever that uh, medium is, whatever art form it is or entertainment or whatever. I want to be the person that also facilitates a way for the artist to get their art to the human being. And I think that I have a way to do that. And now that I've attached it more or less to my purpose in a similar way that I did my 
my, my actual artistry or my creativity, um, the more it just feels like exciting because all these positive emotions are popping off as I get closer and closer to my goal, you know, learning, learning more, it's a step in the right direction, learning what not to do is a step in the right direction. And so it's just as exciting now to me as anything, which is really mind blowing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause essentially like a, a film in its entirety is, it's like an, it's like a product. It's like a package, right? You know, it has yeah, all these things absolutely. that, you know, the experience and everything. And then what you were talking about, how most um, people like you resonate with are like, they're not like the strong characters, but they're more that people can like pull back and they have like a full respect for the whole process mm -hmm. of everything. Oh, yeah. They know when to, you know, dial things down, when yeah, to bring things up. Yeah. Like we were, I remember you were talking, because I think those conversations you were talking about with me, maybe like the last podcast or two ago. Uh, about like the business side of things oh yeah and how like uh i think the one shia film um something about or i don't know it was one film and you're saying how like it was uh oh no it was matt damon and uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah yes. that story. So, so adam told me about this story about uh goodwill hunting and yeah. how the marketing so this this is i don't know if this is true or not 100 percent, but the it could possibly be true that the the marketing behind goodwill hunting was created the image of it being Matt Damon and Ben Affleck from this, you know, same town in Massachusetts and they're best buddies and they wrote this thing, you know, together and they were going to make it together and they knew they were going to do it and they did it. And not only did they do it, but guess what, guys? It won the Oscar for best screenplay. You know, that's a success story. That's something that like people want to see those two succeed because of that, especially that kind of film, you know? Mm. The Southies and and all this this Boston culture, all this stuff, and it it's it's like it was they it is like they made it. It is like they they wrote it from their hearts and they they came up with this beautiful thing. And then the producers were like, "We love it. We're, we'll take it for this amount, but we want the other people." And they're like, "No, we'll only do it if we're in it." And Robin Williams, and they're like, "Okay, here," and and you know made it and wins the Oscar, and then they ride off into the sunset. But I, you know, you you correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. But um, I mentioned that like. That you know, the idea might have the the actual the the reality of the situation might have been there was someone who wrote that script, and then the the production company created or the distribution company or whatever created this marketing ploy of Ben and Matt writing this thing, and it makes you think of the business side of things and how it just made me think like oh it's not it's not it's not what I'm being sold I could be being lied to it, it, it could be a business ploy. To, and it that one if it is true really fucking worked yeah it's like how it's like it's like yeah. how perfect is that yeah you know to for that to be the reality yeah. well yeah and and i've heard conflicting uh stories i couldn't be further away from the sources you know so yeah. for me i don't know either mm -hmm. i don't know if if you know the the authenticity of them sitting down and writing it together yeah. over a couple of years and and then it actually going that way and, and the rest of it, or if it's something where, you know, it was William Goldman wrote it and there were crazy, you know, okay, we'll just market it this way by these best friends. And it's a great success story. I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I just heard, I've heard conflicting information from sources that are supposed to be reliable. So for me, it's hard when you're not that person, you know, if I'm not Ben Affleck, if I'm not Matt Damon, maybe we'll never know. Yeah. But, but I can see, like you said, if that was an idea to oh market God. it, to say, you'll get paid for writing it, but we're going to say these guys did it. I can see how that would totally work because mm -hmm. it touches the solar plexus of every human being. <laughs> I can accomplish something great. I'm meant for, with me and my best friend, to conquer the world, you know? And it's like, <laughs> that resonates with everyone. Yeah. Everyone feels like they have something in them that's calling them to greatness somehow. And so that would be a great way to sell a movie. It just so happened, too, that the movie's really good. Yeah. And that it was well executed and all that stuff. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm... Th that's my focus lately is is how can I also... And, and I don't know if this is with projects that I'll actually act in or actually write. Or if it'll be more projects that I'm I'm just involved in when it comes to um, helping empower people to do it as yeah. well, their own movies. 
Um, but I would love to be the person that believes in something and that can help get that something special to other people who are also special. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to throw in, I think that's so like, like we're in the day and age where that is the way to go. Like we're doing, like we're doing it. We start, I start. we started this podcast from me buying mics and throwing it together and now I'm distributing it everywhere. And you know what I mean? It grows as it grows, but like, right. Everything, like people are becoming, there's like 15 year olds making uh, beats for like the top artists and being sold for however many dollars or whatever. And there are the tools for, you know, people like us and people that want to get into it can do it. All the tools are there. And I don't know, maybe there's another Skillshare course by Adam Ladder is going to come up mm. is the business of filming. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll have to learn a lot more to do yeah. something like that. So know. tune in in the next 15 years. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely other things that I've thought about doing if the Skillshare thing works and um, it proves to be something that other people like then i would definitely consider making more you know right now probably the one that i would want to make uh, is directing actors i would love to do that one mm. um i would love to do like a uh scene study uh, scene study i hate the, those two words together uh <laughs> film study uh uh That'd course you know too. analyzing a film or or doing something about yeah. uh writing I yeah. think those are the three. Edit, editing as well. I really, I love editing. I, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but maybe I have something where I could say I can share some things that I've learned. I'm not ready to do those, but those would be the ones that are on my radar that would be fun to do. Hey, have you ever start, try, like thought of the idea of doing um, like kind of video essays on YouTube and stuff? Yeah. About yeah, I thought stuff? about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, I'm yeah, here. To, there I'm, is I'm here to edit. I, I'm on YouTube. I don't know. I think I'm a little YouTube mm. expert. So I don't Mike, know. If you ever want to do something? YouTube encyclopedia. That's one thing I've always yeah. wanted to kind of go into too. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I've always, um, I've always thought about it, but I've never really done it because I can't quite figure out my lane. You're, um, yeah. You're like you're like yeah. a Texan, Kogonada. <laughs> Who's that? Oh my goodness! He he Kogo he, Nada Kogo Nada, super super famous director. Now he made he made Columbus. He he, he started with doing video essays. He made like uh. the most incredible video essays like of all time, and he would post them on YouTube. And then, uh, yeah, he made Columbus, and it, it was incredible, like uh, visually. Wow. Um, oh, I, yeah, I gotta I gotta check that out. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I I got. Yeah, I love uh, lessons from the screenplay. Uh huh. I love. Um, I really love uh, Nerd Writer. Nerd Writer. There's a lot of good. Um, ones. Shout out! Shout out! There's a there's a there's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've never quite figured out what my lane would be. It wasn't until this pandemic hit that Katie was like, "You should do a Skillshare." Mm. And I was like, "On what? What, what? <laughs> what, are you, what are you on, on vegan cooking? I don't understand." <laughs> And she was like, no, on acting. And yeah. I was like, oh, who cares? I, I, you can't learn acting from videos. Like, you know, I, I just had all the, I was just naysayer on this whole deal. Yeah. And then it just like, I kept hitting me. I was like, man, I would really love to pass that on. That would be so cool. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what I would do in the YouTube lane. There was a, there was one point when there was a, a YouTube channel who uh, is a couple of really good friends of ours that we met a few years ago in Brooklyn they have a YouTube channel, pretty successful, and they wanted to produce a movie, uh, a YouTube channel for Katie and I. Oh, man. They're like, whatever idea you want to do, we'll launch you. And I was like, oh, what? Okay. So we, we brainstormed for like two days. <laughs> Katie and I came up with nothing. So <gasps> that was like a missed opportunity. I don't. I think those people would still launch us if we came to them and wanted to do and I had an idea, but I just haven't ever had an idea uh, i don't yeah. know what i would do um maybe video essays but it's it's really tough i don't know yeah so i'd have to i'd have to brainstorm about it some more but that's good that you're you're a resource because i have always needed wanted to learn more about youtube it kind of it kind of made me think um what kind of brought it in my brain like from the start was when we were at dave's um uh birthday right and you were talking to me about um i remember you started talking about like the graduate Oh. And like going through like all the different little things that made it what it was. It made it so great. And I was like, 
I can like I was I just closed my eyes and I was a little bit tipsy, and I was like <laughs> I could see myself watching this, <laughs> like, you know, and like learning. Oh, you know what I mean? That's great. Yeah, like like, oh, like man, that's a good I, I told idea. Dave about uh recently, uh, he called me yesterday and. I was watching this one channel that was going through like I was learning about the color theory of uh, the movie Her. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm really interested in like the color like grading and all that stuff and how like there's kind mm. of like a rule to you know color design in film and how it's very important mm -hmm. and can subconsciously really like make the audience you know put things together and uh, it makes it easier to understand a story. So like the main character and mm -hmm. whatever his like interests were whatever he connected with because he's a very like um unsociable person but when he did like they were all this the same color you know and the opposite one was always something that he did not uh, associate with and i don't know it's just something to think about so i don't know there's a whole world i think i think you definitely got something you know i think we should definitely we'll talk do it we should do one we um, should we should do yeah let's let's yeah. let's talk about it because i've always wanted to do it there's not there's nothing to lose i mean if we yeah. feel like you have something to share with the world like you do with the with the podcast like dave with his movies and like me with my Skillshare thing, like that, you should do it, you know? And if it's a genuine motivator inside you and it feels yeah. like, man, this is something I should really pursue, then to deny it would be sinful almost, you mm. know? We should definitely pursue it. Cause, cause that's been kicking around. I just haven't had anything that has stuck until this moment really, where someone said you should do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think, I think I would really like to pursue that. So we well, should talk about am, am I gonna lose you as a writing partner? What's happening? I don't even remember your name, oh, okay. but, but okay. this guy, Mikey, okay. I like him. I'm, I'm boxing training now. I'm, you know. no, we, we've all been talking. We've been talking about stuff too. What's, what's happening? We got what's, a lot of things in the secret. What can I do? You can do a lot. See, this is the TMZ portion of the episode. <laughs> is it true that when since you moved to Texas, you put on 20 pounds of Sir, pure, pure muscle? Or is that, is that Mr. false? Mr. Ladder has five minutes. Okay. No, no. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I have more than five minutes. Did you put, did you oh, put yeah? on 20 pounds uh, my, of muscle? My writer's... My writers meeting got pushed to Wednesday, so I'm I'm not on like super time crunch. But oh, um, really? no, it is false. I actually lost all the muscle I gained <laughs> over the quarantine. No maybe. way, no way. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back to 73 pounds. So, um, is it true is you false? Is it true you have a uh, a hatchback? <laughs> no, that is false. Okay, I have, have a 2020 car. Toyota Rav4. Yes, That's congratulations. A real wow. SUV. That's okay. a real SUV. <laughs> real um, SUV. Not a hatchback. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it true you're killing warthogs with your bare hands it is true okay. that we killed five warthogs they're not warthogs but they're wild uh feral hogs on the property and, i did not kill them with my bare hands and being vegan, vegan how has that affected the community uh, didn't touch them there's five million feral hogs in texas uh, is it is it true is it true that you're raising chickens it is true we have uh 20 chickens give or take 20 and yep 20 we used to have three turkeys we only have one now uh two of them got murdered by raccoons uh that was a fun morning and then uh yeah yeah the chickens are doing great they're laying eggs and isn't that the worst bro uh, about, isn't that the worst it was terrible it was awful yeah so i bond with these animals I really know, really I really know. fast i know so it really whitney and tina they died oh, it was awful. No. whitney and tina them. It was Damn. horrible. My dad saw me cry. Ah, wow. This is, this is tough. <laughs> it's all right, though. It, it helped us bond more with Glenn. The other Glenn turkey. is a solo turkey. Dude, now. Glenn was amazing yesterday, by the way, or two days ago, whenever it was. My brother's dog was here, German Shepherd named Comet, awesome dog. And then our dog, Banner, Airedale Terrier, huge. They were both here. We're walking them in the, along the property. And both dogs, like, were outside their fence on leashes, but they, like, Ran at the chicken. There's a fence there. <laughs> and they, they just weren't ate it. anywhere. All the chickens ran away. Dude, Glenn was like, <laughs> he was scared. You could see how scared he was, but he was like, these are my birds. These are my ladies. Yo. I'm going to take it. And I, he would have been toast with these dogs. Like, he would have been dead so fast. Dude, that's, me in, a, that's down, me in a fight, dude. dude. That's me in a fight. Scared as fuck. I'm standing right there, though. Just there, though. It, he showed his true colors. It was amazing. By the way, speaking of colors, uh, turkeys actually change color based on their mood. They're like a oh, I heard live that. version of a mood ring. Get out yeah, of here! Yeah, so he was he was super red on his on his face. Wow. And that's when he's stressed. 
and they're very blue, kind of light gray when they're uh, calm. And he Whoa. was like puffed up and red. And he was like, here we go. And I was like, bro, props. Because <laughs> he didn't back down. He didn't run away. It was awesome. Is he, is he, is he has his head on a swivel now? Because Thanksgiving is November? He always does <laughs> because he's a boy. All the boy, like we have three roosters. Uh-huh. And uh, we've had some chickens die. Uh-huh. We've had some turkeys die. And so as the as the roosters and toms grow up, they naturally become protectors. So they're always having their head on a swivel. They make sure the girls go up in the roost and they go in last. And really? Danger, they're they're they like they're like after the you ladies they, kind of shit. They're like Yes, ev- every night. Every night they always wow. do that. Wow. It's incredible. Dude, animals are amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, they're awesome. This is so nerdy. <laughs> what, hey, what chicken. what do you do with the eggs? We give them away because there's oh. ten a day. Oh, wow. um, my family eats them, but Katie and I don't eat don't eat eggs. But we just collect them each day. Katie you know, calls them chicken periods, and that's and, why. And you judge your grandma. Yeah. It grosses me out every time I see an egg. We don't judge them. We don't judge them. We we accept uh, the way they eat, uh, okay. just like they accept the way we eat. We we disagree, obviously, but. We're there yeah. to help. This is we're on their property. It's their chickens. Yeah. We just want to help. So the okay. reason that turkey's alive is because of Katie's tears. So we have <laughs> we have a lot of uh we're indebted to them. We have a lot of gratitude for them because we love Glenn and they're not gonna oh, so. Katie. No. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Not Glenn. They're really compassionate. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that they that they're like taking care of them and stuff. And and my stepmom said she's like, I'm never gonna never gonna eat these chickens i can't you know <laughs> we've named them all there's no way yeah. but but they'll take their eggs they're laying them anyway and we haven't had any hens that want to brood yet so mm. as soon as one does we're gonna have baby chickens which is gonna wow. be exciting that's gonna be wild yeah dude yeah it's cool it's kind of cool out here living dude, out there dude, man just what, like harlem well just i was like gonna harlem. say what, what's what's the difference what's the difference from harlem <laughs> not much dude not much <laughs> dude, you went everything from pol- the polar opposite imagine. this is, everything has got to be different yeah. Everything's different. dude. The last when Every we when team. we went to pick you up when I went when we when I went to stay over the last night. Now you could tell Mikey because Mikey doesn't believe me. Was there was there not someone dead in the apartment underneath you? On the last there night, was. there was a person died. Um, the last day we were there, um, died a few days before, right? Yeah, I was doing. Jeez. They had probably died. They thought. Um, no, they they thought they died that night. Oh, uh, really? The night before. The night before. I think. Um, but yeah, the police were down there, and I was going to do the laundry, and I was like, "Wow, that is a very <laughs> oh. strong smell." Oh man, jeez, man. Oh, there was dude, something in me, like viscerally, I knew immediately someone yeah. was dead. Like, I can't even explain it. It was like in a split second, I was like, "Oh man, that's that's unmistakable." I had never smelled that before, though. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, anyway, yeah, it was Ugh, horrible. I think my eyes was, are watering. There was a really thing that. There smell. was an older lady. She's very old. She lived there, but she, it wasn't her. She was totally fine. It was someone, I guess, that she was letting live with her she from time to there? time. I think the lady was homeless. She was a younger woman, <sighs> and I think she overdosed on something. But Jesus. it was just, uh, it was just horrible. Yeah, it was like a really, really sad thing. Um, and the, the the coroner was there, and the paramedics and the police and stuff and we talk to them a little bit but yeah it was yeah it like, was tough man time to go it was tough <laughs> that was a tough yeah, couple that had days. never happened before anything like that yeah yeah, yeah. 11 years in Dude. new york and wow. it was the last day i actually yeah. have a death story too do you recently mm. uh this past week i actually wasn't going to say anything but i oh. found out what happened um one of the parking lots that's connected to our properties yeah. that i work at yeah they found a dead body. Oh my god! Underneath oh. the truck. Damn. So, so I wasn't gonna say anything because I was like, I was like, I don't know if someone died, got killed, or something, because I don't want to put that out there. Right. But right. Right. Uh, someone yesterday, I wasn't, dude. It was my whole week was just like it was getting worse and worse. It was raining. It was cold. I was like, dude, like I'm yeah. about to leave Friday out of work. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like on my way home. Fresh I'm like, out. thank God, I can just go home and not have to like worry about anything i have people calling me like i'm like okay I, I i pick it up and i'm like i just hear like that they found it there i'm like oh how much worse can this week get you know like just a right. little cherry on top yeah. friday 
But uh, it turns out there's like a homeless person, and um, oh, I think the rain and cold and shit. It's it's sad, man. Mm. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's weird. That is sad. I had that that kind of thing at Port Authority happened to me. I just walked outside and then saw first thing I saw coming into the city was a dead person, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dead guy on the floor, and he had that that like one thousand mile stare look or whatever you call it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never, I never forgot it. Like his eyes, I never forgot. Yeah. It's so weird to see that. It's so weird. It, it it doesn't. You don't forget that kind of thing. Yeah, I know. It's a weird thing. Dude, that's what I was so. Dude, th- and the place where the body was, I like. Sometimes I like I clean those lots. Whoa. So like, imagine I found that. I would have been scarred dude, for life. One hundred percent. I would have been scarred. Mm. It's yeah. a blessing you didn't. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, we got we, we got to pick this podcast did, up. What's well, going on? Last, last sad thing. Sad, bro. Last, last sad thing. Chicken. The day you the day the day we we went to the airport. Just for just for Mikey's sake, because uh-huh. I don't think he believes me either. How would you describe my reaction to you guys getting on a plane? As if I was getting out of a cab and the guy had never met me before. <laughs> left, didn't even get out, didn't hug me. Wait, what? That's like, how gangster yeah. I was, dude. Take no care, way, man. Take care. I said, take care as the window was rolling up. <laughs> and Katie and I were like, No, you weren't. Wow. I went with that. And I turned the car right up. You didn't get Vroom. out? You just dropped them off. You, you didn't get out? out? No way. No way. How is it? <laughs> oh, wow. All I, heard, all I remember was like, Homeboy, I came to party. <laughs> Your girl was looking at me. <laughs> and that's what I heard. <laughs> that's, what, that's how it went. What happened? I, I just like, felt I was man. like, "Get out!" That was a <laughs> see ya. What really happened, dude? Was <laughs> bawling. So you were? I was like, "Yeah, I, bet, I don't, dude." I didn't know it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> it made me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Right. you were you were uncomfortable. No. You were uncomfortable. No, he was. You were like, he good, was, no, good thing I'm leaving." <laughs> It was a beautiful moment. He was he was very he was very moved. I was yeah. like super sad. Katie lost it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was Katie, uh, man. Was, Katie, Katie ruined it. Katie, Katie broke my heart. The first I was holding on to it, and Katie just fucking <laughs> the second her eyes met my eyes, I was like, don't, don't. It's that moment when you're yeah. like, don't do it, don't do it, because if you yeah. do it, I'm gonna do yeah. it. And she did it. Yeah. Katie can't. Katie, Katie, Katie no, can't filter can't, the though. tears like that. You know, when when Katie's upset, it's coming out. Katie's got a way with her that she just you, uh, can't hold it. In. She's in tune with her yeah. emotions, and, and I, I was trying to just mask my shit until you got on the plane. I just, I couldn't have it. And the second I saw her lose it, I was like, "Oh, here it comes! Here it comes!" You know, your God. throat burns and your nose burns, and your nose, nose starts stinging, and you, yep. you just can't. Then you got a hug, yep. and you're like, "The second I fucking touch these people, I'm gonna burst in a fucking yeah a puddle." And I know that was a tough one. I know it was it was hard. Yeah, it was really it's weird. Sad. And then on the on the on the precipice of that, it was like two months of just depression, <laughs> straight up, <laughs> just bad habits and depression, dude. <laughs> Dave would show up to the podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Just gaining weight and fucking yeah. eating something. Oh. Just, <laughs> just eat the feelings, dude. <laughs> just, just eat the feelings. That's what Brando taught me, dude. You want to be good at acting? Just eat your feelings, bro. Oh. <laughs> just eat them till oh. they go away. <laughs> oh, that poor guy, oh. dude. One of the greatest. Just couldn't struggle at the end, for sure. The yeah, yeah. What do you got, fat? McDonald's. We got questions, bro. Let's get, let's get away from this nonsense. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, well, we'll get on to because I mean you're never things. coming back, and serious it's okay. Things. I moved on from you know. It's fine. Look like you moved on. You don't care. Yeah, definitely not. There ain't an, uh, there ain't an ounce of care. No care. You know. All right. I wanted to ask. Don't leave me, Mike. I wanted to ask. Yeah. I don't know. You never know now. Don't leave me. Mike. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask. So, Lakers. Oh. LeBron. Oh. Top. Three. Three. Five. Maybe better than I wanted to get your 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 take on it because I saw a lot of people saying putting Braun and um and Jordan on the same level better than the late great Kobe. Uh, no, no. Let's let's no, do the Jordan order. and let's Kobe break it down. Let's break it down. Level. Yeah, yeah. All right. 
But much respect to LeBron and what he's accomplished. The dude is uh, one of the greatest of all time. There's no doubt about it. He's a different level. It's a different. It's a different level. It's agreed. It's a whole different thing. Kobe and Jordan, different guys. Yep. Different. Different species. Sorry. Yep. It's just the truth. I mean, you know, a lot of these young young kids. I mean, watch Last Dance. You know, watch some old. Uh, watch some old games. ESPN classics. A different thing. Different yeah. thing, different league, different everything. The homie went and played baseball. You got to be kidding me! This dude is <laughs> a whole different animal. Like, it's a whole different dude. Yeah. Um. But I, but I respect LeBron a lot. What, what what would the order be? He's top lived up your, to expectations. Your top five. Your top five. What would it be? Oh no, my top five. Yo, I haven't thought about basketball in a while. I know. Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so biased, dude. I'm so biased. Okay, wait. We gotta hold on. We're doing top five. <laughs> top five. Top greatest five. of all time. Top greatest five. Of all time. Greatest of all time. Top five. Oh, is Will Chamberlain tough. in it? He's gotta be in it. I, I agree. I know a lot of people say, like, oh, but if he was playing today, you wouldn't uh you don't know that. You don't know that. And that's what Jordan says. He's like, This is a dumb conversation. Right, right, right. You'll never know. It's just different. But it's still fun. So I think you probably gotta put Wilt in the top five. You got to put Kareem in the top five. Okay. Um, I think you got to put Jordan in there. Okay. I mean, he's, my, he's the number one. There's people, though, that have done so many crazy things people forget about. Um, Elgin Baylor was crazy. I know. Big O. Oscar Robert. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. crazy. Um, I'm just probably going to just give you some, just 10 of them. <laughs> um Oh man, I'm no, I'm forgetting. I'm Dude, forgetting one, one through real. five, one through five, and you got to be New America. And there's right. got to be a top. Start. All right, number one yeah. is Michael Jordan. 100. percent Number two. Oh man, this is big. Kareem. Whoa. Okay. Number three. Oh. <laughs> Kwame Brown, no. <laughs> uh, number three. I feel like you're forgetting one dude. Think. One big dude. Oh. Magic. Mm. <laughs> He's up there. Is Magic better than LeBron? I say I say LeBron just surpassed him. Yeah, maybe. With this with this one. I think he just surpassed Dang. him. Maybe so. Yeah, I could agree with that. I agree with that. So what are we saying? We got Jordan, Kareem, Wilt, mm-hmm. LeBron. No, Kobe's better. Yeah. I say Kobe before LeBron. Yeah. Kobe, LeBron. That's five. And then who's number six? It, yeah. Okay. There's two, there's five. That's so five. yeah, I guess Damn. LeBron makes my top five. Okay. Okay. Ooh. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Do you yeah. think LeBron will surpass? <laughs> Look at him questioning think- <laughs> himself in his head. Dude. Do you think LeBron can surpass Jordan? No. No. No shot. It's, wow. too, it's too late. Damn. He's lost too many times. He's he's shown uh, that he's not that he's not that guy. It's too mm. late. <laughs> if he started over and he became a just complete psychopath maniac competitor, and he knew what he would have missed out on if that's what he cared about so much as being the greatest of all time, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think he doesn't have it in him because he's a different guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all right, no, he'll never, he'll never surpass him. I mean, someone might come along and surpass Michael. I mean, but just right now, it just hadn't happened. Kobe was so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe's the closest. Kobe is definitely the closest. Yeah. I don't think we'll see it when, as long as we're alive. I don't think we're going to see it. I don't think we're going to see know. it. I don't know. I really don't know. How Possible. what's like the the age where people start like the grades stop like playing? Like what's the average age? What would you say? 30 31 32? 30, 33 I would say is like the like that you're you're definitely yeah. going to, Yeah, 30 32 you have reached your peak and you're going. Bro, it's it's weird. I got two more like, years, like, dude. Tell some <laughs> tell my basketball primes up. <laughs> I'm talking about Athletes, dog. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, dog. You peaked, you peaked when you were 17. Dude. It's been downhill. 
Oh, I'm gonna start boxing. I'm gonna be like George Foreman at 40, dude. He peeked on the just popping my the red color travel team, bro. Adam, don't make that face, bro. Don't hit that bag too hard. It comes back. <laughs> <laughs> that bag. That little one, you're gonna. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Italian stallion okay, knockout. It's weird though how um, cause isn't in football like the age a lot higher? Football? Yeah. No, super low. Low? Especially if you're a running back. But aren't like quarterbacks old as fuck? Some are old as fuck. Quarterbacks are protected. Yeah. Yeah. You could be a kicker into your fucking late 30s, no problem. Imagine you're like 40, just keep going. Brady's like 41, ain't he? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Imagine being 40, just playing with the boys. But he's like such a, he's such a. Playing with the boys. He's such like an anomaly, dude. That guy's like ageless. And he takes care of his body really well. We have two questions before we got to get Adam out of here. Yeah, we got someone. like ten minutes. Do uh, you want to go to it? <laughs> yeah, we'll go to the questions. The uh, the hey, shout out to the IG live. Everyone who jumped on, Sebastian, yes. uh, 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 Connor, thank you very much. If you guys, ever uh, have a question people, you. that you want to ask us and you want us to cover on the podcast? We most likely will. So ask away on our pod on our Instagram or shout whatever. Us. Boom, we do lives before each podcast. Bang bang. Um, usually on Mondays, right? Yeah, usually on Mondays, six, sometimes Tuesdays, seven Eastern. Yeah. Um, so we got the first question from Connor. Uh, it's how do you detach from solely focusing on end results of creative endeavors? And his, I think his, his tag was, or his, uh, his name was here is Connor is here or here is Connor or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. Something like that. But yeah. How, how, how do you do that, Adam? How do you do that? Detach from solely focusing on end results. You're good at that. I, mean, I think with, it depends with certain things. I'll take, I'll take oh, better oh, reins. Okay. Sorry. Okay. But, um. All right, dude. I think because I, I don't I just see how pushy he got with see how much he changed with the film that we did. He's yeah, been, he's been like, <laughs> God damn, with the film that with I'll meet you there. Right. Yes. When you're in that moment. Yeah. You really <laughs> like you detach from like looking outside of it when you're in the moment when you're doing, you know what I mean? Yes. So like you can never like, I feel like you just got to be in it and do it. If you're in it hundred percent, you're not going to think about it at all. Well, when you're doing it, it's hard to be like, where, what are we going to do with this thing when it's fit? You don't even know what it is. Yeah. When you're doing it, all you're thinking is like, I have to get this equipment set up. We have until, uh, eight thir- 30 to get this set, yeah. You yeah. Know, set up for the shot. Especially if like something like film is like, if you have everything set up, like a schedule. Yeah. I'm sure before. Yeah. I get but that. Maybe he means like what, while you're coming up with, while, while you're in the, like, uh, the preliminary stages of like, uh, creating. Oh, okay. Thing. Okay. How do you not get in front of it? Like, how do you put, not put the wagon before the horse, Adam Louder? Was that a McConaughey? Before the horse wagon works. Oh, wagon works. Uh, well, us. Right. What do you think, horse. Adam? It's, it's the car. So it's the car before the horse is saying. I'm sorry. Um, you know what, dude? I only do it through. Okay, forget it then. All right, I'm, I'm unplugging. <laughs> Just unplug it. Um, this is like a two. There's two answers to this because you know you can answer it one way, which for me to detach yourself from end results. End results to me, I immediately think of like. What is the impact of this? Mm. Is it going to be good? I hope. It, like I think of it that way first, and my answer to that is, it's none of your business. You have no idea how it's going to do. You couldn't possibly quantify the impact, so let it go. But I don't do that very easily, so I would have to pray about it and ask God to remove that from what I'm focusing on. It's like a desire. Is it a desire? And that's what works. And that's part of that. Yeah, it's an expectation. Expectation. Yeah, expectations uh and for me my expectations are impossible to fulfill so I, i'm always setting myself up for disappointment when i do that mm-hmm. so that's what i would say i would just put it out of my mind but i need help doing that the other thing is and if you think of it from from a creative standpoint the end is in the beginning you have to come up with the end first uh-huh. i think because mm-hmm. then you know where to go you know how to make decisions that will you know, you push down on this part and it pops up an equal equal amount at the end or towards right, the end. Right. You know, everything is connected. A story, a sequence of images put together if it's a film or pages in a book or whatever. All of that stuff is connected. You have to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, then everything's just kind of going to be arbitrary. And endings don't just come out of nowhere and write themselves. Like it's the most important part of the process, I think. Mm-hmm. And you, you have to, that's why I ask in my Skillshare class, why do you want to be an actor? And hopefully 
will come up, up with an answer that they're satisfied with that they're all about because that's going to be the thing that motivates them through all of the obstacles dang dude dang I like it. Hadi is uh, this like a uh, Iranian um, writer director he, he did a bunch of great movies one of my favorites is called a separation and uh, I may have shared this before but he looks at writing uh, as a a clothesline mm. um, or like in your closet you know you you have um, what is that called that pole that your clothes hang on <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> so that's like that's like a story and I don't have, wait, to have, a, you know, I don't have you know a pole you, in my closet like... you know what I'm saying not like <laughs> where the clothes hang on it's not a clothesline the bar you know the bar saying? yeah yeah. i got you're not gonna it. i'm not falling for this i'm not falling <laughs> for this. but you screw one end into the wall yeah. and the other end into the wall the coat this is the beginning and this is the end and the scenes are the coat hangers that hang along that thing uh, if you don't have a solid ending it won't be attached to the wall and all the scenes slide off because they make no sense i thought that was a great analogy for storytelling you have to know where you're going where every decision you make along the way has no purpose. Yeah. Oh man. So you don't know. Dude, That's that, why no. you come up with a premise at the beginning. You simplify the story down to three sections of one very short sentence. And then you build the story out of that. You always know where you're going. That means you can go all the way over here because you know, that impact is going to happen over here because you went that direction dude and to have a really good unity unity of opposites how 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 long have we been writing our thing you know the, the this thing we've been thinking about doing together like it's been it's been three weeks two and a half weeks weeks i think it yeah. hasn't it been like i mean you're walking me through this how it's uh, a film should be struck or a story should be structured and it's exactly what you just explained like it's got it you have to know where you're going before you can begin almost you know what i mean so it's mm -hmm. That's like it, it racks my brain sometimes because my brain runs away from me. My mind will be, my, my imagination will take her and be like, "Wouldn't this scene be great?" Because then it'll connect to the character, and then this character will because the relationship could be this could be the the linchpin of the relationship. And if that drops out, then and I'm thinking of scenes, but I'm not. I wasn't thinking like my brain wasn't going to focus on creating a premise. Slow down, mm. like that's first. Do that first, so that we know where we're going. We, we don't lose track of the story we're telling. And then we could start working on the other, you know, parts of the story. And it took us like weeks to get like a, a somewhat solid, you know, meaningful to both of us premise. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard work. It's not, it's cool. not like, it's not like. A, no, it's hard. Yeah, it's not easy work. Yeah, uh, it, it, the cool, a cool way to look at it for us because we love, we're nerds and we love uh, cameras and film and all that but cool way to look at it is this you you dave have like a uh a really long lens you know it's used for extreme close-ups and you it's very intimate and you're getting a lot of behavior and you're getting close to people and connecting with them through this lens and all we're asking you to do in this process is just swap lenses and go to wide right and that's all you're doing you're just learning how to calibrate your own senses to what the lens is offering you. It's giving you a, a zoomed out perspective. If you are able to do that, then you can move in. Yeah. You're not going to know where you're moving. You're going to feel kind of lost and like, you know, you're kind of stabbing in the dark. Yeah. But if you have the wide lens and you know where you're, you know, you can zoom in and you can say, I know why this scene has to be this way. Yeah, yeah. There's no way you can direct if you don't have that. You don't even know what to tell the actor. Yeah. This actor's going to have a million questions. And by the way, that's just one department. Right. There's like 14 more. And they're going to have a lot of specific questions. And you're going to just be saying arbitrary stuff yeah. unless you know what part of the movie you're shooting now. And mm. when they ask you this question, you got to have a real answer. Yeah. Mm. But a really good answer to start with, if you really care about progress, is I don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's always where I make the most progress is when I say, I don't know. That's why like, I'm trying to learn business. The first thing I said, I don't know anything about this. Yeah. And right now I know like a little bit more than I, I knew yesterday. Yeah. And so I'm starting to get to the point where I don't just know nothing. Yeah. I know yeah, some things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the best. That's the best. It may add up to something that's actually useful for me and others ultimately. Yeah. So I guess that's a two twofold way to answer the question, you know, looking at expe expectations as an end result or looking at the end result being 
how does this thing end? Yeah. And I think you have to know that you can never take your eye off of that. But if it's about expectations, you have to take your eye off of that. Cause mm-hmm. there's no way you could quantify mm-hmm. the impact. So weird. Yeah. It's like both. Yeah. We got, we got one more question for Adam. And then oh, we'll well, there you go, up. Connor. Um, we got the next one from Sebastian, my bro, 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 bro. Um, he asked, what is the best way um, to regroup from an L or failing at something? Oh, so good. Dude, failure so good. <laughs> yeah. The best way to, the best way to interact with it is to embrace it. Like it's your best friend. Mm. It's so good because that's where you're going to learn the most. Yeah. You're going to learn how you need to adapt, how you need to adjust. Yeah. Now you got all the answers. Just take it in the chin. Oh yeah. You have, you at least have a way to not do it again. Yeah. Right. You have a way to not (laughs) screw up this time. That's crazy valuable. Yeah. Um, That's why I try to read as much as I can because you know, experience is the greatest teacher, but I love to hear, hear from people who have had great experiences and then sharing them honestly, because mm. then I can maybe, maybe save myself a little bit of trouble. But that being said, you know, I'm, I'm still have my one life and I'm going to mess up. And I've messed up so many times, but it's only through those failures that I've been able to get anywhere yeah. that has, has been helpful for me. So to recoup, just be like, you know, get together with people who love you and, and talk it out. Why did that not work? <laughs> what was it about it that didn't work why 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 yeah and when you get to the bottom of that and you get it answered and you simplify it and you go it did not work because of this you're in such a better position to start next time yeah so it's good to talk about it with people you care about yeah. okay that care about you it's good to like talk about it and, and, and hone hone in on like why it didn't work and what what can what, what, what could you do better next time honestly you've done be, that with me many times super honest yeah. Yeah. Be super, super honest. I've had I've had experiences where you know there's a director who made his his movie and he mortgaged his house and he borrowed tons of money and he got credit card debt and da da da, da all this stuff and uh, didn't bother to learn writing because writing is ah. it does everything's great and uh, went to make this movie and cast his friends and then made a movie and it was a you know hour and a half long and and then on social media I'm gonna beg people to on Amazon or whatever it is. Give me five star reviews. Give me five star reviews. Give me five star reviews because he needs to figure out a way to get some money to pay back the investors that he'll never pay back and that he's going to be indebted to forever. And what does that do for him for his next movie? It's just placating him that and and rewarding bad behavior. Yeah. It's not it's not loving to give him a five star review. The best way to love that guy is to be straight up with him. Yeah. If he cares about you and your opinion listen and hopefully he'll adjust but there's a lot of people out there who don't they just want to not fail they don't want to feel pain which is impossible to avoid and they want to just have their cake and eat it too and so please give me a five-star review on amazon i don't care what you thought of the movie like i would rather make five trash movies which i've done and i would rather five really honest opinions than than you know five people just being like go you're great yeah it doesn't help me like i'm watching it and I am very attached to it. I'm objectively knowing this sucks. So why are you telling me it's great? Like right. that, that makes me suspicious of you. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. What, and that's why I always ask why. And there's got to be a reason because there is a reason for everything. Why do you think this is great? You'll end up getting them to be like, it's not great. I don't know why I said it because I feel bad and it's uncomfortable to make to, to critique you. Yeah. But like this sucked. Mm. Well, okay, great. Why did this suck? And it's like there was no story. It just felt like I was just... Watching some people do nothing. I and mean, it just bored me. I was bored. Okay, that's good. I'll write that down. Don't be boring next time. Why was it boring? You know, and all that. So um, failure can be so helpful if you use it properly. Yeah. Beautiful. Bang, yeah. bang. That's how we do it. Adam like Louder. Adam, Adam Louder in the building. How do we get yeah. to your Skillshare? How do, how do we get some students who, who want to get involved? Um, actually... I can give you a link. Hey. And it's like a referral link. I think it gives Ooh. people <clears throat> free two free months. If not two free months, two free weeks. They've changed it maybe since the pandemic. But they were giving two free months based on a referral link. You click that and you go. You don't have to ever pay them. You can just have the free trial, however long the trial is. And you can check out, you don't have to check out my stuff. Check out anything. Um, learn stuff. There's a lot of great stuff on Skillshare. I've learned a ton on there already. I'm always looking to learn. Um, 
yeah, click the link if you guys post it uh, on your on your platform. It'll be in the info. Yeah, like we'll it, put it down below. Down and below. then r- write the date in your calendar to cancel it a certain day if you don't want to pay 15 bucks or whatever a month. Um, but it's cool to check out and just see if you like it. Skillshare, I think, is pretty great. So awesome. I enjoyed it. But yeah, I'll just do that. Or if you don't have the link and you just want to see it, just type in my name in the search and it'll come up. Perfect. Oh. We got a meeting tomorrow, me and you? Mm. Uh, we can do it if we can do it real early. Done. 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 Nice. Let's do it. Let's do it early. Yeah. yeah. Early. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I want that. Go real early. I want it. I want it. I want it. So what, like noon? How's noon? N- no noon. Way. 1230. I'll be there. So like, I think one works. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm down. Uh, I'll text you, but we'll, All right, we'll text go me. early. Text you. All right, Adam, what are some last words? Everything going on. We were talking earlier about, you know, Ooh. it's election day tomorrow. Do you have any, any, I don't know, something you're going to live by for the next, you know, year to come? I know it's the end of the year. Things are kind of crazy right now. What would you tell um, whoever's listening right yeah, now to you? Just let us know what you're feeling. What would you tell them? I would say regardless of the outcome try your hardest to not lose yourself. And what I mean by that is things that matter to you the most for me, that's trying to love, you know, my friends and my family and the people in my life the best way I possibly can. Uh, Try not to lose that um, because it's going to, it's going to be chaotic. It's going to be confusing. You're going to try to look for a foothold and you're going to try to whatever it is, whatever the outcome is, I feel like it's going to be a tough thing, but, um, Either way, I would say just try just try to really get close to people you love. Don't lose yourself. Hold on to your integrity and your values. And um, if you can do that, uh, then you can you can really get through anything. Um, right. So I think it's going to be okay, and I think we're all going to be all right. And we just need to love each other. Hey, and if if someone votes some way that you don't like, but you love them, you can continue to love them. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. That that's a way for, in my opinion, the enemy to win. Which the enemy isn't a political entity. The enemy is uh, evil. Right. And I think it's a way for evil to get in. For you to write people off based on their own political ideologies. Listen more to people. See why they feel the way that they feel, and then still vote how you want to vote. That's and right. And if they try to encroach on that and hate you because of the way you vote, that's not right. But don't stoop to their level and hate them because they hate you. Love them instead. Last, and you'll, yeah. you'll really make an impact. That's a, 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 that's it goes a long way. That's really well said. Last thing before we go, you 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 brought something up to me that I just want to put out on this podcast. This is really, I, I think it's really significant. You uh, you taught me the lesson of like you vote with your click or you vote with your vote or you vote with whatever your whatever you, however you can vote. Like you, if you click something, you click it because you're voting for it. You're saying I want to see more of this. I want to. I want to experience this. I, this is where I am sending my energy. I'm giving it something. I'm giving it fuel. Uh, my vote, I'm voting it this way because that's I have the power to do that. If I don't want to do that, if I don't support it, all I can do is not give my click away or not give my vote, you know, which is okay. That's how you live in that's a democracy, right. right? That's how you live in this. That's how yeah. you exist in this kind of country. Um, and I just think that was really cool because you. I wanted to mention that because you brought that up to me and it made me start thinking about the things that I take in or choose to take in. If I don't want to take them in, it's not I should, I should, uh, you know, try to, um, I don't have to persuade anyone not to do it if I don't like it. If I don't like it, I just don't click it. Right. If you are uh, allowed to enjoy the freedoms um, that are provided to you, then you have to respect the fact that others can do the same. Yeah, so, and I respect whoever's you know, also you, telling me not to click things. Like you do your thing, but uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. yeah. Every, everyone has a right to to speak what they want, and you know if they have that right, you know you have that right, and just respect each other's rights. That's that's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, there's so many times we we vote all we vote every day. Yeah, you know, like you said, with your dollars or your time, music, you your effort, your energy. You're voting all day long. People are voting for this podcast when they click it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, that's no small thing, you know. Huge. And yeah. so elections are no different, you know. But yeah, absolutely. You know, we got to respect, you know, the the other person that we disagree with because what are we going to do? Yeah. We're all going to agree? Mm-hmm. That ain't never going to happen. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. That's what makes things beautiful is the diversity of, of thought and opinion. And, and I love that. Yeah. I think it makes us strong. 
Yeah. Well, th- thank you. Thank you, Adam. And thank you to everyone who's clicking because we noticed a, an uptick in the clicks. And yeah. we're very, th- yeah, we're yeah. very grateful. Uh, so thank you guys. And we, we see you and we notice you and we're, we're on a rocket ship and if you want to get on, click it. Hey, vote for us. <laughs> I don't mind. No, I don't mind no voter fraud. You know what I mean? <laughs> get a couple extra Jeez. clicks. You feel me, dog? <laughs> Oh, but boom, no, that was dude, that, that was email account. <laughs> open up another Gmail, baby, Maybe and then subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe, hit notify, hit the bell. Go get a proxy server or something. Sorry, I don't know. Dude. Keep clicking. <laughs> Adam Louder, boom in the building. Dave, yep. any last oh, words? Thank you. Love you, Adam. Thank you for boom. being my brother. I love you too, man. It's mm. my ultimate pleasure. I love you guys a lot. I love you too, I appreciate man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much Bring for being on. on, man. Always Anytime. welcome. Boom, that was episode 93 of the podcast, guys. If you're listening right now, we love you so much. Uh, if you are listening and you're still here, why not just scroll down a little bit, like that button, like that, like, like, subscribe, leave a comment. You know, if you have a question, let us know. My name is Mike, and I'm signing out. Hey, my name is Dave, and I love you. Adam, you gotta. I love you guys. My name is Adam. Wow, and I love dude. you guys. Oh, wow. there it goes. See, it's the one. Let's thing. go back. Let's go back and do all. We can of start it again. again. This time, I'm really. I got it this time.